it's sounding good today. Just did a quick tune up uh, with the new placement. The super tweeter tucked higher and firmly against the glass. And that uh, second tweeter, the bigger tweeter, I had to put a guide facing so it would face closer to the glass bounce and give me less interactions and cancellations because um, we're trying to make a better deeper image so your left and right point sources have to be as correct as you can get them that's my philosophy anyway so this is the window into the DSP this is a, just an Android tablet uh, doing a Windows remote session and the DSP's in the boot it's on a Windows PC and it's Ableton Live Suite and it has uh, equalizers and things like that it's a 32 band equalizer just to give you an idea this is on the left and right channel with maximum keys of 20 and this is the shape you're able to make uh, with this EQ the target curve is determined by another matching equalizer measurement on the mic input and the mic input you have a target curve in mind just to give you a quick squeeze you have a target curve in mind which here is the red red line you measure what the speaker is telling you in this case it's the blue line and then you apply a correction which is a black line and you just copy that black line into the buffer and this is how crazy this plug-in world is and uh, I can't see other DSPs catching up to this anytime soon maybe uh, you can sort of do lots of auto EQ things in REW but they're all non-real non time and uh, in the VST plugins lanes, it's all real time. And so that correction curve I put in here, I set maximum bands, and it just did it. And it gets closer and closer to being a perfectly pink line. And uh, the way I do things, I always do the house curve second. It just makes it easier so I can have a flatter target to go for. And I use minimum uh sorry linear phase house curve so it doesn't affect my phase and um here's the ipad ipad is the source apple music is the program has lossless mostly red book stuff this one happens to be 24 bit they have a slight amount of dither added which is kind of a piss off so it reduces the dynamic range of the original recordings by a tiny bit. And I've got to pause that. And I can show you the um, the DAC I have for this iPad is an RME Babyface. And it's via USB. So this is, becomes the master clock of my system. This is an analog input. So you've got the whole mixer interface for the iPad. And uh, for one of the inputs to the baby face, I actually have an external computer running a phase program called Smart. And here I can just roughly look at my phase and go right channel, look at my phase. I can pan to the left, left channel, look at my phase. I have two microphones behind my head, or three for this. And uh, so, yeah, it's all the stuff I get up to in a tuning session. I can mute that, go back to the music. Sometimes I have to switch the sound card. From... There we go. So I've balanced the left and right magnitude 
and then I'm just listening for the uh, amount of depth for that tune. And this all happens because I'm always changing my speaker setup to get a better image. And I've been working on this right hand side to stop any variances on that pulling. Pretty good so far. What are you doing? Hitting the road, listening to music. Is this really your mom? Yeah. Yeah. She has a beautiful voice. Yeah. It's why I'm busy. I'm easy like Sunday morning.